The U.S. presence in Afghanistan now into its second decade. That war has lasted longer than World War II and the Civil War combined. President Obama has ordered all combat troops out by 2014, but polls suggest most Americans want out now. What does all this mean for the men and women of the U.S. Army? Joining us now from Washington, Army Chief of Staff, General Ray Odierno. He's at the Association of the U.S. Army's annual meeting and exposition, where he'll be speaking on a panel today, uh, talking about the strength of the U.S. Army and uh, the future. Welcome to the program, sir. Well, thank you, Christine. Thanks for having me. And we have a, just a slight delay, so hopefully people can bear with us a little bit. I want to ask you a little bit about the theme for this year's annual meeting. It's Army's, America's Army's Strength of the Nation. Ten years now, ten years after the start of the war in Afghanistan, eight years since we went to war in Iraq. What has the Army learned to this time? How are we conducting ourselves in the Army? How is the military conducting itself differently today than it did a decade ago? Well, the great thing about what we've learned is the adaptability, capability, and resilience of our soldiers uh, across, across the world, whether it be in Iraq or Afghanistan, how they've been able to adapt to the situations, continue to fight hard to achieve our nation's objectives, doing a variety of things, from, from helping uh, governments be formed to defeating the enemy. And it's really about how great our young leaders are today and how they've been able to develop and continue to move forward in both of these missions in Iraq and Afghanistan. In terms of Afghanistan, Stanley McChrystal, the former commander of the coalition forces in Afghanistan, said um, that he, by his estimate, were only 50 percent done in our mission there, um, and that the main thing missing is a legitimate government in Afghanistan. Would you agree with that analysis? And if so, what does that mean for, for the next few years of, of what we must try to do there? I, I would put it in a little different context. I would say that we are continuing to make progress across the board uh, with the government, but most importantly with the Afghan security forces, so they'll be able to take over responsibility and continue to allow the government to move forward. And I think our focus for the next two years is continuing to bring better security, continue to train the Afghan security forces, and continue to help the government continue to grow as they get ready to move forward on their own in a few years. I want to talk a little bit about the shape of the Army for the future, because no doubt that's what you'll be talking about uh, at this event here. Aaron Burnett, our Aaron Burnett recently asked Defense Secretary Leon Panetta, I mean, how we would respond to another a terrorist attack. And this is what he said. I don't know that we're going to deploy 150,000 troops the way we did in Iraq and Afghanistan. I think the chances for that, frankly, are small. The main lesson is that you can target these guys, as we did in Yemen, as we did in uh, the Fatah. We mm -hmm. can target these guys. Uh, in a very effective way using a smaller and more effective force. What does that mean for the shape and the skill set uh, of your U.S. Army, sir? Well, well, first we know that we have to be part of the solution here as we look at uh, the new austere times that we're going to be in. And obviously, throughout the, all the military, we have to find some savings in order to help with the debt. Well, what we do know is we have to have quality forces that can operate across the wide spectrum of operations they might ask to do. Our biggest concern is about uncertainty. How do we respond to uncertainties, things we don't know about today? And so we have to make sure an army that is capable of responding anywhere in the world, capable of doing it quickly, and capable of solving the problem as quickly as possible. And that's what we're focused on as we move forward. You mentioned new austere times, and it brings me perfectly to my next question. I mean, you've talked about um, the hollow force you experienced when you first entered the Army after the Vietnam War. Uh, you know, super committee and budget debates aside, you want to make sure that this is done smartly. Uh, what, kind of, what kind of advice are you giving about where to cut and how to, to look at the future in these new austere times for the Army and for the American military? Well, and you've hit on the question again. It's, it's not that we are going to get smaller or cut. It's about how we do it. And we have to do it in a rational way. We have to do it slowly over time so we can sustain the quality, sustain the capabilities that we need. Uh, we have to be careful about cutting too deeply. Uh, I'm extremely concerned about if we go to sequester because I believe that would devastate the Army, devastate all of our military. 
and could actually will cause us to fundamentally change how we do national security. And I think the world today is much too uncertain. So I'm certainly hoping that we can come to an agreement, find cuts that are across the board, and that does not dig too much deeper into the military uh, so we can maintain our capabilities to provide security for this country. Right. There's our fighting forces and there's two million men and women who have served uh, in the past 10 years uh, on the battlefields in Afghanistan and Iraq. Those people come home with significant challenges. Their families have challenges. It's been widely reported. We also have to make sure that any kind of uh, new austere uh, reality that we still are taking care of America's military. It's absolutely critical that we remember the soldiers and families who've sacrificed so much, those who have deployed two, three, four, five times. You know, over the last 10 years, the Army has given 14 valorous awards. We have over 1,200 amputees. We've lost over 4,000 soldiers. Uh, we can't forget about these people, their families, and what they've given for our country. And this doesn't even get into those who we know will be uh, potentially involved with post-traumatic stress and what that means in the future. So we've got to stay focused on this. We've got to take care of them. Mm -hmm. And we've got to make sure that we keep an army that allows us to continue to respond and not put too much pressure on those who remain in the army as we meet our future challenges. All right, General Ray Ardiano, U.S. Army Chief of Staff, thank you, sir, for joining us today. If you're not in D.C. but want to catch some of the top-notch panels and exposition at this year's expo, uh, exhibitions, rather, at this year's expo, you can download uh, the Army Virtual Exhibit app at army.mil slash mobile. Now's your chance to talk back on one of the big stories of the day. The question for you this week.